The following program is brought to you by Zespo, the world's leader in gourmet vinegar. Okay. Okay. If I wanted to have an offspring, I'd simply spend 12 days eating nothing but mine fruit from the Zilkak ravines and spit out an egg. Okay. But you people have sex. Correct. I don't really understand this sex of yours. Why do you need two people to do it? Why do you do it and not reproduce? What makes it good or bad? There are just so many okay, layers okay, okay. of- Okay, okay, Goldfar. Would you like me to explain human sex to you? Yes, please. Well then, have I got the porno for you. If you're searching for some celluloid, a picture in particular, a certain slice of cinema that never left a signature, a long forgotten bomb, a thing that never hit the theater, afraid you'll never find it now, but don't give up, it's premature. I'll put you on the pathway to a DVD distributor that's got the greatest chance of having hands out what you're looking for. They resurrect the long neglected movie madness prisoner and bring them back to action from the silly to the sinister. They've got the right connection and the methods to administer to make your matinees as many cases their beginnings where they're known to be the first and foremost feature from her finisher. So crack yourself a glass and let's enjoy a taste of vinegar. Virgin is the most bonkers porno I've ever seen, and the only one I know of to star hustler centerfold Kari Clark. You will soon find out why. At the end of time, on a planet in a distant galaxy, an event is about to take place that may be the most significant in the history of mankind. Because the most significant moment in human history certainly wouldn't be how humans left Earth to inhabit other planets. Um... If it's the end of time, wouldn't all history just blink out of existence? His greed, his treachery, his passion for war has long caused man to be thought of as extinct. No, man's lack of existing would be why they're thought of as extinct. Yet a single human being survives. The fate of humanity lies in the hands of a girl child who has been preserved as a curiosity by an all-powerful race of thinking machines. You are about to witness the birth of the Star Virgin. Okay, first lesson, no sex with children. Why? They're not built for it, it fucks with their heads, and then they grow up and murder everybody. I'm just getting out ahead of this because they introduced this human character as a girl child, and she is not a child. I don't know why they did that, because she is definitely an adult. Well... See? Not a child. You are on planet XR31. I am mentor. My function is to maintain your biological system. That's a robot? Yep. It looks stupid. <laughs> I think it's supposed to look like a vibrator, but doesn't. And this robot is supposed to keep her alive? Yes. B but if she was alive in stasis, why did it let her out where she could die more easily? Or did they just create her now and somehow skip the first 25 years of human growth? Is that why they called her a child? Because she's a two-minute old 25-year-old? Uh, okay, okay, let, let, let's pump the brakes, Goldthar. We will answer all of your questions at the end. Why am I wearing this covering? Covering is a generous word. Because you are a messy biological organism and your erogenous stones are useless on this planet. Are all biological organisms as ugly and useless as me? But some of them are able to outperform a monotone plastic hand fish. You are manufactured in a protoplasmic duplicator, first developed by Xerox, the messiah of machine intelligence. See? She's a space clone, made by robots. Xerox can now duplicate anything in the multi-universe, still for only three cents a copy. Ha! 
Xerox jokes. Did that thing say multi-universe? Did I really come out of here? Yes, literally seconds ago. So she does have a baby brain. No, she can talk and walk around. She has perfect adult function. She's just got a little memory problem, that's all. Were my ancestors test two babies too? Unfortunately not. They were manufactured by a repulsive and now completely obsolete activity called sex. Sex? What's that? I am not programmed to answer that question. Why, you shifty metal cunt, that's exactly why we're here! All right, stop your whimpering. Hey. Well, here it is. Sex began in 1950 at Monroe High School. What? Yes, 1950, when 30-year-old high school girls would skip class to hang out with their 45-year-old boyfriends. Hey, what do you say we go for a soda pop or something, huh, baby? No, I don't want to go for a soda. I've heard of a really neat place to go parking. Park in a car like this? What, are you kidding me? Howard Payne built this thing. If it stops moving, it'll explode. So they go to the Garden of Eden Incorporated to... park their car, apparently. Welcome to the Garden of Eden. One dollar, please. Thank you very much. Space Well, now what do we do, huh? Suck your thumb, dummy. Who's calling me a dummy, huh? Cool off, pal. <laughs> oh, Adam, look! That's better. Just relax. We're gonna be the stars of the whole show. What the fuck is happening? Come over here and uh, have a fruit. Not that one. That one. What a strange fruit. Don't stare at it. Suck it. Yes. Suck on the skinless pineapple you found in the woods. Come on, Adam, it tastes so good. If you're scared, I'll take a bite with you. Scared? What, are you joking? This is kid stuff. H kids? There are no kids! These obvious adults then start gnawing on the pineapple and making out with it in their mouths. Is that sex? It's actually quite unsexy, but we're getting there because with pineapple shit all over her shirt, they decide to get undressed. And the male's fascination with the female's teats. Is that sex? It's part of it. Like the snake man says. Don't be such a klutz, big boy. Take your time. You gotta warm them up first. Yeah? So, teat access would be like, phase one? Sure. What's phase two? Take that can of peaches over there and uh, pour it all over it. <laughs> what? Uh, well... Uh, why? You don't actually have to do that. But this is the invention of sex! Well, yeah, but he also just shoves an entire can of peaches up her pussy as if she'd enjoy that, and then eats them off of her like that's not fucking disgusting. I'd show you, but I'd get banned. Plus, it kind of looks like throw up. Okay, Adam, let's get the show on the road. Slide that banana into a snatch. Banana! <laughs> it's not a banana. <laughs> Down on your knees and eat it. So I'm watching this space porn where a 30-foot snake man is instructing a greaser to stick fresh fruit up a cheerleader's pussy so he can literally eat it out of her. But once he finishes the banana, which looks hilariously like he's sucking her dick, they start having actual sex. Now, you see what they're doing there? 
That is sex. There are various ways to build up to the mood, but that's basically the main event. And, and this is for creating new life. Well, hopefully not if you're a high school cheerleader, but in general, yes, that is the method of procreation. Mentor, that looks so nice. But how do we manufacture people? When that extension between Adam's legs was inserted into a female of your species, a small person was created. But who was that strange creature in the tree? That would be the guy that wrote Green Eyed Lady for the band Sugarloaf. Because Earth is a weird fucking planet. According to ancient religious theory, that was the devil. Your species believed that the devil made them enjoy sex. Oh, Mentor, I want to hear more about the devil. Out of the clone jar for ten minutes and she's already ADD as hell. The devil took many different disguises and a great deal of delight in corrupting your species. Oh, by the way, we're just suddenly doing a 1920s silent horror spoof. Here we meet Percy and Prissy. Blech. They're out driving in a horrible storm for some reason, or maybe they aren't. Either way, they run out of gas. building you saw, without a sign, was at least a hundred yards away. If somebody saw you from inside, they wouldn't just appear at your door. Oh, and oh, okay. I'm gonna need you to just stop. This is for me to learn, not for you to self-indulge. Fair enough. So after Richard Nixon leads them into the motel, he lets them know that Count Dracula is waiting to greet them. Yep. Nixon brings two goblets for the guests, and Dracula pauses, right the fuck there, to drug Percy's drink. And since the idiot watched him fucking do it, he drinks it because he's brain dead and fucking collapses in a heap. And since he's an idiot, he deserved to be roofied. No! Well... Uh, moving on. Then, with the boyfriend out cold, Dracula reveals he's not wearing pants under his cape. Zucchini. Oh, zucchini. Then they chase the girlfriend around the mansion for a minute and end up catching her back in the dining room. So I'm watching this space porn where Dracula and Richard Nixon run a hotel room so they can gangbang wayward travelers. <clears throat> now, now this is sex, right? At both ends? <laughs> yes, but this is also rape. Oh good, rape! Okay, explain rape. Uh, okay, it's very simple. Anytime you have sex with someone against their will, that's rape. But I thought you said that everyone likes sex. Well, yeah, but you kind of have to be in the mood for it. And I think you'd be pretty hard-pressed to find anybody who wants to be wrestled into submission by a blood-sucking monster and Richard Nixon. Ah, you knew where I was going with that, and I don't care. There's also this thing called rape fantasy, See, some people get kind of a rush out of the idea of being taken by someone they find attractive. Which is why, when Percy wakes up and fends off Prissy's assailants, she says this. See? Now we can relax because she was totally into being raped. By Count Dracula and Richard Nixon. All right, so even though she didn't say she wanted it, it was rape, even though she wanted it. Yes. But, okay, but what was she complaining about? What did she mean by come? What was that girl complaining about? What did she mean by come? <laughs> Damn it, I sound like a sexy baby. Asian pictures define coming as an overload of sexual excitement. An overload? Like, your weird bits explode or something? 
I kinda. The mentor explains this though with another video. This time about football. So, football is like coming? No. The video analogies at this point start getting kinda loose. And we zoom in on a packed arena that's suddenly empty as hell when the camera hits the field. Oh, what a run! He's hit one! He's hit twice! He's hit three times! Everybody's going down on him! <laughs> there, there was a joke there? What was the joke there? Anyway, the star quarterback, whose name I shit you not is Roger Starstruck, is unresponsive after the pileup. And since this is the 70s, that means two unidentified people carry his lifeless body into a dark tunnel and eventually dump it in the locker room. Jesus Christ, this ain't a college game. This is a real thing. If we lose this one, we're gonna get fired. That means you too. Also, I hope you don't die. I want you out in that field and I want you to be hostile. I want you out there, I want you agile. Well, make sure to jostle the head in that. That's known to perk up the comatose. After the coach leaves in a huff because the guy with brain damage won't get off his ass, two of the cheerleaders sneak in to see him. Sure is out cold. Why don't you try some smelling salt? No, it's me. I don't really feel like censoring what happens here, but what they mean by smelling salts, since I'm sure you're dying to know, is that she strips down naked and straddles his face. Now, there's no grinding, no oral contact. She is simply nuzzling her batch over the very tip of his nose. And yes, it looks both terribly silly and not all that fun. And the other one starts sucking his dirty, sweaty mid-game dick. Talk about your taste of vinegar, am I right? And then they proceed to have their way with him. Now, is this rape? Oh, yes. If you can't give consent, it's rape. But what if they leave before he wakes up? He can't be upset if he doesn't know, right? Uh... Luckily, that doesn't happen. He wakes up and finishes fucking them willingly. He then returns to the game and throws the winning pass. So I'm watching a space porn where two women rape a guy with brain damage so he can go outside and win the Super um, Bowl. I thought you said rape was bad. It is! But they were raping him and it saved his life. Uh, okay. You just said it yourself. That guy was a damn vegetable. These females raped him and he was revived to peak physical and mental condition, enabling him to lead his army to victory. Being raped was the best possible thing to happen to that crippled idiot. Okay. Clone Chick is all turned on from watching the sex videos, go figure, and Mentor the Idiot Robot seems surprised by this. I knew it. All this input has excited your sexual circuits. All right, you hot little slut. You want something really dirty? Something that will really make your pussy gushy? Check this out. Now, the mechanoid knows she's an organism. Yes. So... Why does it keep saying she has circuits? I don't know. Also, the mechanoid is annoyed that the female is sexually aroused. Correct. So why is it solution to show her more pornography? <laughs> because sometimes porno flicks with robots in them are stupid. For example, Mentor's next video is of a dancing lady whose main attraction is... <laughs> Flatulence. It can breathe? So it's like a regular mouth? You use it to eat and breathe? Are you enjoying yourself, sir? Oh, you bet. She sure has a hot pussy, doesn't she? Yeah, real sister, huh? <laughs> and she's wrapped in a fucking snake. So, like, snakes and humans are, like, sexually intertwined or what? No! Well, I, 
I mean, you can be, I guess, but no! You want to get a little hotter? You know, I know a place where you can go and do that. How much? It's a hundred dollars. But you can use everything. I do need everything. Even rape? Okay, well, see, this wouldn't be rape because they're paying for a service. Well, what if they were paying Jeffrey Epstein? Oh, come on! How do you even know that name? Gentlemen, welcome to the world famous Ecstasy Club. This way. Beautiful. Nice. Make yourself comfortable. Because the most comfortable part of a sex club is when you're shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of other dudes and can't avoid eye contact. Now you notice there's a vibrator right beside you for each and every one of you. Well, now it's definitely getting comfortable. And then she tells them to whip their dicks out. So, not 100% clear on why she gave them all fake dicks first. Also not clear on how she teleports out of the scene. Let's have a hand for Keiko and Ginger. <laughs> and they all fuck in a big gross pile. I'd like to take this opportunity to point out that your genitals are in a very stupid location that appears to be both cumbersome and inconvenient. You get used to it. Anyway, after a long period of things I can't show on YouTube, the waitress returns with terrible news. Gentlemen, I regret to inform you, the show is over. <laughs> yeah, lots of regret in that face. And remember, gentlemen, that we have five shows daily here at the Ecstasy Club. Yeah. How wonderfully abrupt. The hell is she doing now? <laughs> I promise. It doesn't matter. Unit Mentor, these are the mechanical masters. We are detecting a strange radiation from your area. No, it's coming from her area. If you cannot normalize the situation immediately, you will be disconnected. Everything will soon be in order, Master. You are them, you have to stop. They are going to disconnect me. Disconnect it from what? Who knows? The important part is that this super intelligent robot legion is threatened by pussy heat. That's important? Well, <laughs> relatively. Mentor then pulls this thing out of thin air. I thought it was supposed to be some kind of lightsaber gag at first, but... <sighs> it's not. Here, honey. Stick this in your cranny. It will ease the pain. If a robot comes up to you and says, Here, honey, stick this in your cranny. It will ease the pain. I'm not saying you're on a bad path. Just double check how you got there. So back to this thing. It looks white. It is not. It's actually clear. And she does use it exactly how you assumed she was going to use it, and I obviously can't show you that, or the big finish. But just to give you an idea, I will now give a YouTube-friendly depiction of how this scene ends. A gigantic, orgasmic explosion, returning man to the stars from which he was born? Or is this Big Bang the rebirth of mankind, returning him to his rightful place as Lord of the Universe? Are we all, then, children of the girl known as Star Virgin?
What would that even... Fuck it. Golthar, has this helped you to understand human sex? Okay, so... Sex is when a male tries to puncture a female's internal organs in order to make an infant. But, since you can clone yourselves, infants don't exist because babies are adults. So, sex is purely recreational. Well, we, we can't actually clone people yet, so... Oh, uh, female genitals eat, breathe, and are radioactive, snakes make people really horny, and rape is cool if the victim doesn't bitch about it. Hey! This wasn't educational at all! Zuspo, the best is now.